In this video, I'm going to discuss a few different ways that I control my LEGO Train Switch tracks remotely. I'm going to use two different methods of motorizing the official LEGO Switches, both of which were taken from other YouTube videos. They will be linked in the description. One uses a 9 volt geared motor, a small gear train that includes a clutch gear, and a gear rack that moves and switches the track. The other solution uses a Power Functions M size motor and a direct linkage to switch the track. The latter solution does stall the motors, however. More on that later. I'll also point out that in my testing, third party Power Functions motors, which are becoming more and more common, do not work as well due to their higher speed and lower torque. I was able to get mine working after a fair bit of coaxing. One way to combat this, or to make any motorized switch track more reliable, is to remove the clicking system that is built into the switch tracks. Almighty Arjun has a video on this, which will be linked below. This is on his work in progress channel, which I often go back to to see how his ideas progressed before they became a video on his main channel. Very interesting to watch. I'll start with the power functions option, since I think that would be the most popular choice. You can control the motor directly with a polarity switch, but this presents a few problems. First, the switch would need to be flipped back to center to avoid the motor stalling for long periods of time. Second, the wires are very short on these devices. First and third party extension cables are an option but you would need many of them in order to reach across a layout. A simple solution to this, provided you have the parts, is to use the infrared remote control system. Luckily, the switches do return to center, which solves our stalled motor problem. For bonus points, we can eliminate the need for battery boxes all over the layout, or at least the batteries inside of them. I'll link two more videos below, one where I show you various ways you can use a 9 volt train regulator to power an IR receiver, and one where you can make your own 9 volt cables of any desired length. This works great on a large layout since you only need a single pair of wire to run to each IR receiver. For further bonus points, you can also use an NXT with High Technics IR link sensors to control the IR receivers. And if you just can't get enough of these bonus points, you can use the DAC to Control Lab interface, and you can make your own relay board, and... Uh, okay, we're losing focus here. The main problem this would present on a larger layout is the number of IR channels available to us. We have four channels, which lets us control eight motors independently. If you are using power functions for your trains, some or all of these channels may be used up already. I recently stumbled on an idea watching a video on Surreal's Bricks and Pets channel. It's in his 10 LEGO Power Functions Tricks You NEED TO KNOW, and NEED is in all caps, so be sure to give the entire video a watch. The relevant section is at the midpoint of the video, where he postulates using Power Functions polarity switches to turn the individual IR receivers on when needed and off to free up the wireless channel. Unfortunately, this idea doesn't work as presented due to the way LEGO designed their four-wire system. I go into a little more detail on this in my Power Functions Without Batteries video. But this idea can be done using a 9 volt power source and the old 9 volt pole reverser switches. Even better, the pole reverser switches can be motorized. Here I'm using an NXT to turn on the IR receiver, send a command, and then turn the receiver back off. You could expand this out to control 24 individual switches with a single NXT. That's all I have so far on using the power function system. We're not done with the video, but if you found any of this info useful, be sure to hit the like button so that others may find it as well. Now the 9 volt system can be controlled in many ways, such as an RCX, Scout, or other Mindstorms controller provided you have the correct adapter cables. A simple pole reverser switch works as well. The clutch gear negates the need for precise timing to avoid stalling the motors, but it does introduce a point of failure. I have a few dozen clutch gears, and no two seem to match each other in performance. 
More than half of my clutch gears were set to the side when I needed eight motorized switches for a project using the DACTA Control Lab serial interface and software to control a layout. The DACTA Control Lab is a great way to earn some clout with fellow LEGO DACTA fans. Battery powered bricks. I still have a dedicated Windows 98 PC to run <laughs> old games and software like the Lego Dacta Control Lab. <laughs> he, he's not a real fan if he doesn't have an Apple II. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, one more for the 9 volt fans the Technic Control Center. It can only control three switch tracks without a fair bit of mechanical and electrical ingenuity. But it is a very fun option. Maybe I'm just being nostalgic. If you haven't heard of the DACTA Control Center or the Technic Control Center, I have short retrospective videos on each, which I'll also link in the absolute phone book of a description below. The last method I'll mention is still a work in progress. Motorizing Trix Brick switch tracks, or in my case, a double crossover. The double crossover presents a special challenge due to how little room there is between the tracks. I have a working solution, but I'm not satisfied with it in its current form. I'm using four third-party power function servo motors, connected in diagonal pairs to not waste any precious IR channels. I plan to use an NXT to send IR commands, which works much better than using the remote control where you have to hold the switch down until the entire train is passed and hope you don't lose signal during the process. I only received these switch tracks a short time ago, so I'm still working on a better solution. As I say in many of my videos, my goal is to only use official LEGO parts, or third-party parts if they are direct replacements. It's a limitation I put on myself, but to me it's a fun challenge. And you may be able to replicate anything I build if you happen to have the parts in your collection. I want to thank each and every person that contributed to this video either directly or indirectly. I couldn't have done this on my own. I've had a blast putting these solutions together and I hope you found something useful in the video. Thank you for watching and remember to play well. <laughs>